after getting a lot of heat from the U.S. Justice Department and then some from its users, Robinhood CEO Vladimir Tenev has been in the public eye for quite some time. The reason? The GameStop short squeeze. But regardless of what they did, we are here to talk about Vlad's life and how he managed to build one of the biggest trading platforms in the world. So here is the story of Vladimir Tenev, Robinhood, from 75 rejection to $7.6 billion empire. Let's dive right into it, shall we? Where it all started. Well, we can't really pinpoint anything to one specific time period, but we can give you a list of reasons that created the biggest trading platform that millennials are going crazy for. First of all, we should mention that Tenev was born in Bulgaria. When he was five years old, his parents moved to the States, and they've both worked for the World Bank. So you could say that this young entrepreneur knew a thing or two about banking. Then, after high school in Virginia, he went to Stanford. There, he got a degree in mathematics from Stanford and then went to UCLA for his PhD. He and his friend Baiju Bhatt had more important things on their minds. They started a company called Solaris, which focused on high-frequency trading. This was back in 2010, so Tenev had to leave his PhD for some other day. Solaris wasn't doing too well, so they created a different company only a year later. That's why in 2011, Bot and Tenev started their Kronos Research, a company that sold low-latency software. Basically, what they did was they gave banks and other trading companies the ability to process large amounts of data in a very short time frame. And again, this company didn't last long enough to see the light of day. That's because Tenev and Bot folded Kronos Research with another idea, which is Robinhood today. Robinhood's Funding before we get into it, make sure that you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video so far. Thank you for helping a small channel like us. The two friends that were closer than brothers at this time saw a really big problem in trading platforms. Back in 2013, only about 14 or 15% of the US population had invested in the stock market, which meant there were more dog and cat owners than there were stock owners in the world. According to the two founders, there was a problem in the financial markets, that of elitism. You see, when it came to investing, only those who had a lot of money could invest in the stock market. That's because, even though you theoretically could invest $100 on a stock, you would get a $10 brokerage fee, which would eat up your entire profit for the year. Robinhood wanted to change that. Inspired by the folk hero, they wanted to create a company that would do the same thing Robinhood did in the stories, provide everyone with access to the financial markets, not just the wealthy. They made a business plan and went knocking on door upon door, and 75 investors slammed that door in their face. They didn't believe the app would make any money because it wasn't taking fees from its customers. But we'd say that the 76th investor saw the bigger picture they secured $3 million from Index Ventures and Google Ventures. LA Hacks showcased what Robinhood would do to the financial markets back in 2014, and just a year later, in 2015, the Robinhood app officially hit the App Store. And with $20 billion of assets under management and 1,281 employees, we'd say that the company is doing pretty well. After gaining some popularity, Tenev and Bot managed to raise $110 million for a valuation of Robinhood at $1.3 billion. Robinhood was officially a billion-dollar company. Since then, they've managed to raise hundreds of millions of dollars. In 2018, they made a deal with DST Global and secured funding for, are you ready for this, a whopping $363 million. That, of course, made the two CEOs seek a third round of funding for $200 million in 2019 at an evaluation of anywhere between $7 to $10 billion. Now, seeing how Robinhood was gaining traction, major trading platforms like TD Ameritrade and Schwab followed suit and eventually ended with a merger of the two companies. So, even the giants can't really compete with these guys. They're that well positioned in the market, and nothing can take them down. Speaking of going down, even the minor stock market crash we saw in 2020 couldn't stop Robinhood. The trading on Robinhood actually increased during that time, showing that the $7 billion fortune Tenev has amassed is not without reason. 
On a related note, where do you think Robin Hood is headed in the future? Will they continue being a global force, or will they get crushed by larger financial institutions? You can tell us in the comment section below. If you'd like more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of them. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.